Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel. Today we are going to look at the latest from the models for the next couple of weeks, like we normally do. We're also going to have a look at the maximum temperatures for the upcoming heatwave and the potential for more heatwaves. I do apologise to everyone that hates heatwaves like me, because I don't like them to be honest. You know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I'll take my snow and you can have your heatwaves, alright? That, that, that'll do for me. Um, I know there's a few of you out there as well, like me, that might not like heatwaves, and some of you that love heatwaves, you know, there's there's different uh, viewpoints out there, I'm just one of the people that likes my 24 degrees, that's perfect for me, but if you like your 35 degrees, this is good for you, <laughs> and then the unsettled weather may be on the way, but we'll have to wait and see what they're showing today, enough rambling, let's get on, so if you did enjoy today's video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, we're on the road to 1.8k subscribers, um, we're about 40 away, so um, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as always. So, we'll look right now, so as we're speaking on the Thursday, um, high pressure is centred just to our south, low pressures to our north and west over Greenland, and the winds are in from a southwesterly direction. We're on day one of the heat wave. we've seen 29 degree temperatures in the southeast today as well, as the heat wave is beginning to take hold. So, as you're going to see uh, through the next few days, high pressure continues to build to our east and southeast, and we bring in that wind from that quite more warm or hot easterly to southeasterly, and you can see those milder air masses moving in. 15 degrees firm for many of us moving through the country, and that's going to lift the temperatures up. Low resolution model here on Saturday is showing 28 to 29 degrees, and on Sunday, 27 to 28, but as you'll see, the GFS massively underdoing it because it's a lower resolution model. So, going beyond that though, we've got again, low pressure maintained to our west. It parks to our west. That could bring a little bit of unsettled weather on Monday into the north and the west of the country. For parts of, for example, the Republic of Ireland and North and Northwest Ireland. Uh, but it does stay away. And again, we see a build of heights. That height, high pressure builds to our north and also to our south. And then we see a resurgence of this warm air moving northwards again. So we hold around that 10 degree ice firm. Low pressure parks itself to our west. This is a new trend from the models. Low pressure parks itself to our west and we bring in the wind from a southwesterly direction again. Heights are high to our north as well, like a blocking, northern blocking. But heights are strong over Spain and France, which allows the southwesterly to return. And we bring in the 15 degree ice firm again through the country but at times. Um, through that next week, you can just see the 10 degree ice firm covering much of the country on Thursday, 15 degree ice firm getting into the southwest, southeast of it on Friday. That little heat plume there, 31 to 32 degrees in that far southeast corner. Could that be a sign of things to come? Well, let's see what it shows later on. Again, low pressure being stretched and elongated in the Atlantic next weekend. So, not this weekend, but next weekend. And again, we're kind of hovering around those really warm air masses before eventually we see another surge of this warm or hot air from the southeast. Low pressures parked to our west, high pressures out to our east, and around that you can see the winds originate from a very long way south, and we are bringing in again that 15 degree ice firm. The 20 degree ice firm is just clipping the southeast there as well. Don't know why I'm sounding so extreme today. <laughs> And there you go, 34 degrees, have that one in Herefordshire. <laughs> Bob, I'm thinking of you. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, but anyway, beyond that, so um, into the extended range, unreliable range, the GFS 12s that brings in low pressure from off the Atlantic, turning it fresher and more unsettled with winds from the northwest. But who knows with this with this run what's going to happen? Um, because you know, look at that cool pool by the end of the run to our northeast. But who knows if that's going to develop? With this, with the way that the things have gone so far, it just it looks like it could just continue with these heat wavy spells. The heat wave threshold was actually met today in parts of Yorkshire and the Midlands and the southeast, of course, um, today. So. Um, that's going to continue for the next few days. If we get three days, that's considered a heat wave. So um, we'll have to just see how things develop with that. How does the GEM compare? Let me move the screen so you can see it. Again, high pressure again centred to our um, east and southeast. Winds in from the east this weekend. Through into the weekend, you can see that low pressure parked to our west. And that's just allowing this east or southeasterly wind to form, bringing in this warm air, hot air, 15 degrees firm covering the country through Saturday and through into Sunday as well. Now, by Monday, the, you can see the GEM has low pressure more moving just to the northwest of Ireland. So we actually have a northwest, southwesterly wind taking over. But you can see that we have got, you know, unsettled conditions returning for a time. 
But this one is completely different to the other one. Uh, Slidler uh, moves across the south before weakening um, as it moves through. That could bring a little bit of wet weather to the south. But that moves through, and then we're going to more of a northwesterly direction, uh, wind direction, as high pressure builds out to our northwest by the end. Winds in from the northeast. Um, so a completely different trend, but still above average with the temperatures, just not what the GFS was showing, which was that quite warm air. But you can see a big difference between the GFS and the GM. The GM has, by Wednesday next week, an area of low pressure packed over the top of the country. The GFS has high pressure to the south of the country, bringing in that 10 degree ice firm once again. So, variations between models. So, a very big flip. Now, the ECM, sadly, as you can see, has not been updated yet. And I can't show you that today because I'm a very busy guy, <laughs> I'm afraid. But, um, again, we can look at the midnight run, see what it was showing. High pressure again to our south, winds in from the east and southeast through this week. Then into Monday and Tuesday, you can see that area of low pressure is much further uh, not much further east. So, it does move into the country, bringing that unsettled spell of weather. But, unlike the GM, it does bring that heat back in. With low pressure trying to move in, and by the very end it does, but we've still got this hot air just to our south. Will that move northwards? It's a very uncertain picture. Low pressure again, though, is trying to track southwards with this run. Winds are in from the southeast, but it doesn't last too long because the low pressure eventually breaks through by the 20th, 19th, and 20th of July. But it's still, as you can see, you know, it's pretty warm still. It's not cold or anything, it's pretty warm. What, how will it play out? Well, let's see what the GFS ensembles are showing. You can see that the general trend is for another heat wave. This is from the GFS 12Z run. You can't see fully, but we don't care about past day 10 because it's unreliable as it is. But you can see this is the heat wave at the moment, the 14 degree ice firm moving through. But you can see some very extreme runs in this uh, middle range around the 18th to the 20th of July. Uh, there's some very extreme ones going up past the 20 degree ice firm. Could we see another heat wave? It looks kind of likely. Do, and if you're saying it's not going to happen, don't rule it out. I'm looking at you, Atlantic Law. <laughs> I should be talking about more important issues like climate change. It is a very important issue, but I don't like to get political on the channel, as some of you might understand, because it opens a can of worms and it's just... It, I don't want to get involved in all that. Thank you very much. But anyway, so yeah, it does look like it is going to turn hotter again or warmer, I guess into that uh, third, second to third week of July. These runs are going way above average with the upper air temperatures on the average. There's quite a few going around 15 to 20 degrees. So a very warm spell looks likely, to be fair. Uh, it could tip, tick down again, but again, you can just see the evolution of this within the models. It wasn't as high before on the 18Z run, and now there's much strength and signal for it to actually turn quite warm or even hot. One run getting up to the 25 degree ice frame, which would be quite exceptional, but not out of the question. Um, we're not going to look at that today. And then we've got the ECM WF run, the midnight run. Here you go. Again, very similar trend. We've got above average temperatures for the next week. Um, well, week to, well, next five days, I should say. For maybe a cooling trend with the um, ECM runs, although the ECM 12 said is a bit of an outlier. Midnight runs, a bit of an outlier. For in the long term, again, a little bit of a heat spike, but nothing exceptional. But the ECM is often less bullish on this sort of pattern taking hold. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how that develops. But again, does look like there could be a couple of heat waves or like spells of warmer or hot wet, ho hotter weather um, with this. I haven't mentioned precipitation too much, but it does look pretty dry, uh, particularly further south. More unsettled as you head northwards. So we've got to to, I don't know, Durham, for example, in the northeast, you can see more precipitation spikes. That unsettled spell on Monday could bring a bit of rain to parts of the east and northeast, as well as the northwest, and possibly the southwest as well. But all will be revealed, I'm sure. Now, we'll look at the UKV finally, just to see the max temperatures it is predicting for the next few days. Um, so we'll start with tomorrow. Tomorrow it could reach highs of 30 degrees quite widely for the Midlands southwards, um, even into parts of the northeast as well. Um, further north and west, of course, it is a little bit cooler, and along the coast as well. For example, Scarborough is going to be 21 degrees tomorrow. Don't know why I picked out that place as random. I'm probably somewhere I used to love uh, visiting when I was younger, but anyway. Yeah. So it is pretty widely 30 degrees. It's pretty warm, even Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland, 26, 27. Not too bad if you like the heat. Highs of 33 or 34 in parts of Herefordshire, so um, not too bad, I'd say. There, on Saturday, again, it's a little bit cooler in the east, actually. More of a south-easterly wind, so the east misses out on some of that heat. But again, heat mainly focused on the south and southwest, really. Central, southern, um, central, southern, western midlands, if you want. Um, 
is probably the best way to describe it. Highs of 33 degrees um, along that Welsh border, I guess um, you could say there. Again, Scotland seeing some of that heat, maybe hints of 30 degrees for um, North East Aberdeenshire. And also for parts of the Republic of Ireland could see 28, 29 or even an isolated 30 degrees. It's a pretty warm day. Throughout the nights are going to be quite warm as well, quite muggy, so um, be aware of that. Get your windows open. <laughs> uh, do what you do, get your fan on, that's what I normally do, get my fan on. You might be able to hear it in the background of this video. <laughs> um, uh, 3 p.m. on Sunday though, highs a little bit lower than uh, was shown a few days ago, but again, could reach 30 degrees in, that, in an isolated spot in the southwest Midlands there. Um, and maybe the Welsh board. Anyway, uh, again, widely 25, 26, 27 degrees, parts of Yorkshire in the north. Um, so a pretty warm day again. Um, before into Monday, you can see that heat's begin to clear away. Oh, we're going into more of an easterly direction with the wind. You can see fresher Atlantic air masses moving in for many. The contrast from 24 degrees to 14 degrees by um, the afternoon on Monday with that unsettled spell beginning to take over further northwards, if this one is correct. And by Tuesday, we're all into much fresher air masses with 18 to 20 degrees being the highest temperatures for many. Looks like the central southern belt of Scotland, or the central belt of Scotland, going to see the highest temperatures of 21 or 22 degrees, possibly 23 in the south as well. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, by the way, I wanted to mention the potential for thunderstorms. Well, if we go to the weekend and Friday and Saturday, um, I, thank you to um, the person on the Discord who mentioned this, you can see that the cape, the energy for a thunderstorm, is quite high. Um, look at all this cape that you can see, quite, quite big cape, levels of cape, 1500 joules, uh, which is enough to produce some big thunderstorms, but there's no precipitation around, and that's just because the air's quite dry, um, and there's not really enough for showers to form. You can see by Monday there are showers around, and they are forming into bands, so there could be a few rumbles of thunder with this um, faint squall line. Look at that, really heavy showers um, on Monday. These could have a thundery taste to them. We'll have to see how it develops. Um, there's that clears into the northeast Scotland. There could be a few thunderstorms around. I wouldn't rule it out completely at this stage, but I'm not expecting too much at the moment. You can see some really heavy rainfall with this squall line here. Um, could occur, but of course, things are always open to change. Bit of a longer video today, though. Um, thank you all very much for watching today's video. I know I've said a few things I shouldn't have, probably, but oh well, that's part of um, what we do, and I'm not really too bothered. <laughs> I do it for the people that like the content. But anyway. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video informative, comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Leave the notification bell on in the in, in the video description, whatever. Um, join the Discord down below. Become a member if you want to and support the channel. And I'll see you all in the next one.